Oh, looks like I, okay. Yes, welcome back. Looney listeners, you are listening to Into the Night, a Moon Knight podcast, and we are back again for an extra episode this week, uh, a, a quite a special one. Uh, we'll let you know as we get into the show, but uh, also we are simulcast over Twitter and YouTube, so you can catch us there. A couple of faces there for you. Um, he's bent over away at the moment now, but uh, I'd like to introduce um, our guest, he's no stranger to the show as well. Uh, he's appeared on more recently Roundtable Robin. He's done an Isla Ra sessions with his favorite book. And we did uh, not that long ago a spotlight as well on his band Delita. So big welcome to you, uh, Noel Looney Tunes Tate. How, how are you? I'm good, Ray. How are you? Yeah, good, good. It's always um, it's always pretty fun to to have a nice chat with you. Um, we had a bit of a chat earlier on today, or for you that would have been last night. Or uh, <laughs> yeah. yes, I was uh, I was out on the balcony lapping up the sun, uh, oh. you know, just, uh, basking in it. Uh, yeah, so uh, different time zones, different corners of the world. Um, but no, we have you here for a very special reason, and that is. Uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get into your your latest EP, the Other Void. Yes, by my group Deleter. Yes, um, so Loonies will know that Noel and Deleter, the group, uh, provide the music to to the podcast, which we're ever grateful for. And uh, and recently they have released an EP. Uh, it was launched on Friday the thirteenth of September last month. Uh, it's called the Other Void, and it's um. No, how about look? You give us a, a a bit of a plug for what it's all about. Um, well, it's a six song EP based on the um, Warren Ellis, Declan Shelby, and Jody Blair. Declan Shelby, it's hard to say his name. Uh, <laughs> and Jody Blair run on Moon Knight, um, called "From the Dead," and each song is uh, based on each issue of the run. Mm. It's very exciting because uh, we did talk about this before in one of our spotlight sessions. Uh, the The album was very much in the works, Noel. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, you gave us a bit of an insight into, you know, some of the, the ways that you kind of approached uh, the songs. Uh, in this episode, we're hoping to to kind of get through all the songs in, you know, a fair bit of, of depth. I, uh, I've had a really good listen to the album. I've made some notes as well, Noel. It's a, it's a cracker. I, I love it. Um, so hopefully, um, you've assured me everything's, uh, on the table to discuss. So that's yeah, anything you want. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so this is going to be pretty cool. And also loonies, the reason why we are releasing this episode as well is that, um, Noel, uh, and Delita have a gig coming up. Um, so October the 11th, I believe, uh, let me just, uh, pull up the details um, at club or oh, three three one clubs, no, uh, this is a place that you've been to before. Uh, you've gigged before. Oh yeah, many times. Mm-hmm. It's a nice and, small little club in the arts district of uh, northeast Minneapolis. Right. So loonies, any of you loonies around the area, I highly urge you to uh, check out Delita. Uh, October eleventh, which is a is that a Friday, Noel? I think it's a Friday. Friday. Uh, no cover, and you guys are playing alongside buildings and arms aloft. Is that correct? That's right, right? Sandwiched in between the two. Yes. And have you, are you, are you friends with these guys? Do you know them that well? Yeah. Buildings, we know very, very, very well. Um, they've been a band for a long time, and I've known those guys for a long time. And we gigged and even did a little touring with them, too. Okay. They're cool. Mm-hmm. Like a heavy heavy kind of band just three of them yeah they're nice into their comics or they, they're not into comics <laughs> <laughs> okay fair enough one of them was very into uh the the netflix uh marvel shows that i know okay. that for sure uh and then the other band arms aloft um are newer friends of ours we played with them recently mm-hmm. and um they're from the neighboring state um wisconsin Mm-hmm. And they're coming to join us for this one. They're re- they're a really cool band as well. Very political band. Okay, are they um, fairly young or new to the gigs? I mean, no. 
I, th- I believe they've been around for a while too. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. Excellent. Well, um, yeah, I mean, loonies, check out these three bands if you can. Again, October 11th, when this podcast drops, um, we're looking to drop early in the week, early to mid next week. So at the end of the week, um, that's where they're at. So yeah, I'm um, very exciting. No, uh, and, and we'll remind loonies towards the end of the show as well. Um, but the main reason why we're here is to look at this EP, the other void. No, uh, first and foremost, um, what what can I say? Like, uh, I want to say well done, but it's, that makes it sound as if like, you know, I've marked it or something. I just want to say congratulations, <laughs> you, you know, you. being a fan and it's just an, an awesome, uh, you know, all six tracks are really fun to really good to listen to. And, uh, as, as a Moon Knight fan, it's uh, obviously holds a lot more relevance. So, um, thank you, I guess, is what I want to say for, for creating You're welcome. Yeah. A cool EP. Um, and uh, we're going to have fun uh, kind of looking into it. Uh, also, also, I wanted to mention, Noel, when, when you did uh, launch the, um, the EP, it was fortuitously on the Friday, Friday the 13th, I think, of September. Um, you guys uh, played a gig at the Clearwater Comedy Stand-Up Get Down. Um, we did. Yeah. How, how did that go? Tell us a bit about that. How was the... Uh... It, was, it was weird. <laughs> <laughs> it was in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, which is where that band Arms Aloft that we're playing with next um, on the Friday the 11th are from. Mm-hmm. And it was a mix of music and stand-up comics. And yeah. so the uh, um, we played first and then like five comics would do just quick tight five sets. Mm-hmm. And then another band would play, and then they, it it was very strange. But they got a keg of beer for us, nice. And it was in this uh, really cool spot called the Metro in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. That they do like weddings at and stuff. So there was like chandeliers in the green room and oh. a multi level facility. But it was really fun. It's a nice little town, and it's got a pretty deep musical history of its own. So okay. um, uh, it's. Yeah, it was weird, yeah. but we had fun. We had fun anyway. I it, I prefer playing something that's a little off the beaten path anyway. Yeah, and I mean it's always difficult to gauge your own music and stuff. But how did you feel? Uh, were they receptive to the music? I mean, you mentioned them being a very music Wisconsin, being very kind of music orientated. Is this the sort of deleted the sort of music they're into, kind of thing? Or yeah, we're. I mean, we're sort of like the kind of band that people just kind of step back and watch sometimes it's not like they uh freak out or anything and it's not always the most accessible music Mm -hmm. to -hmm. crowds but um uh we didn't chase anyone away so that's good Uh, yeah and actually uh, the question that's just popped up as well Noel. um you know how do you do not wanting to be too confronting but as a front man like how do you how do you inter- interact with the crowd is, is there a lot of banter in between songs or um no i mostly ignore people oh, do you, do you? Personally, yeah. Uh, um, yeah i do a lot of staring at, at people but i don't talk to them much uh, we hardly inter- we try to get in and off as fast as we can okay um, no, no, that's fair enough yeah. yeah yeah just to make it kind of a you know like a freight train coming through uh, well, so just... people are more left kind of stunned than anything. That's, that's more fun. <laughs> well, just, you know, um, more mostly about the music, isn't it? They're rather yeah, exactly. Yeah. We don't, you know, we don't um, sell any merchandise except for records. We don't have T-shirts, any of that kind of stuff. We don't try to brand ourselves very well. And so we just try to let the music speak for its own. Man, you should, you should get you should get a, get a shirt done. Yeah, get deleted. Uh, if anything... Uh, and I know that you did it as well. Um, the the cover to the other void, awesome design. I got to oh, say, thank you. Uh, yeah, very uh, obviously very inspired by the Egyptian thing. But I I love the the kind of the negative, and uh, I don't know whether it was a, a nod to Moon Knight, but the blue, white, and black um, just works really well. Just those. Yeah, I simple- actually designed that um, cover about a week before they announced the Moon Knight TV show with the same ah, yeah. color scheme. So yeah. I think Marvel owes me a little bit of money <laughs> and for inspiring that. <laughs> well, I, never, I didn't know that blue and, uh, you know, blue, black, and gray were Moon Knight colors, but apparently they are. No, I mean, if you look at the Bemis run, I think more 
purple's been introduced in there and uh and, and of course the black and white as well but um mm-hmm. no no works very well so uh you need that as a t-shirt no i don't know get, get, get that happening i'll go make, we'll make you a one-off <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh cool so uh i was about to say as well like just about that front man thing because um there was a band i used to follow over here and <clears throat> the front man his name's ben unfortunately he's passed away uh you know a few years ago um uh, but he was always always quite kind of acerbic towards the crowd y- you know oh, yeah. um, sort of confrontational yeah it's kind of like uh because in sydney i don't know if it's about it's the same at your your end your neck of the woods but whenever there's a gig happening um, people still tend to talk and murmur and mingle and do stuff and uh anyway ben would just like he'd get the shits and go hey <laughs> everyone <laughs> pipe down we're playing now <laughs> you know and he, was, he, was, he was a really good musician really great singer um it's a mm-hmm. shame that he kind of passed away but uh he had a very memorable stage presence um anyway Let's get on. Let's crack straight into this EP and loonies. What we're we going to do? So Noel and I, Noel has given me, uh, graciously given me permission. No holes barred. What we're going to do? We're going to go through each of the tracks, starting from uh, track one, which is Slasher, all the way down to Spectre. Um, I've I've got a little subcategories here for each of the songs. We're going to go through it. I'm going to play some clips as well. Uh, just get a bit of insight uh, from Noel as to how these songs came about. Uh, but also just to get a sense of, I love doing this, Noel, just get a sense of how things are put together, the layering. It's, it's all it's all great stuff. So um, actually, sorry, before we get into that, a couple other questions, Noel. Uh, mm-hmm. You mentioned you had a, uh, so you had some friends as well as the band members um, uh, get involved into the creation of the EP, uh, some backing vocals more often, uh, more more in particular. Um, mm-hmm. and you mentioned you had a uh, you had to coach one of them, Janie. Uh, yeah, the friend we just had one friend do um a lot of backup vocals, and she's a fantastic singer. And um, her um, her and her husband are they're pretty into comics, but they're not completely caught up, I think, with everything. Um, mm-hmm. her husband has uh asked me a lot for uh newer recommendations for things. I mean, he go he goes he's my age he goes back to mm-hmm. comics for a long time but you know like like a lot of people recently he's kind of catching up and like when black panther came out he was like what are newer black panther things i can be into and i was like well ta Coates and uh, brian stelfreeze you just go buy all that stuff right away <laughs> and get that um and she, she once um showed me a picture she had they had found the um archie punisher crossover <laughs> Have you ever seen that? No, I can't. Put. There's one, but I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. It's really funny. But uh, while, we, while we were, um, she came in cold. I don't even know if she'd even listened to the recordings. And she came to the house to record. And I busted out my trade of uh, uh, From the Dead. And for each song, I would kind of break down. I was like, okay, here's, as sort of inspiration, I was like, here's, this song is based on this issue. And we kind of go through it. She's cool whoa, that's weird or that's messed up or whatever. Like, okay, so whatever that sort of makes you feel, that's sort of the character I want you to bring to whatever vocals you're doing on it. And so for every every time we'd get one done, we'd just spend an afternoon recording and we'd get one onto the next and I'd come out and I'd say, okay, issue two. It's called Sniper. And it's very fast and violent and, you know, just kind of going through. So it was really fun to have sort of like a, a visual representation of what the audio was trying to kind of put across and then put it through her um, filter and see what came out her artistic filter and see what kind of came out the other end. It was really fun. Wow. So she um, is singing her trade as well. Like she, she, yeah, she... she's a vocalist by that's her job. Okay. Cause I was about to say that really, I had not considered that at all about um, as you mentioned, asking her to go into like character and how that influences each of the tracks. You know, when you first mentioned it and backing vocals, I just meant, okay, I just thought, okay, you got, you got a friend to come over and uh, she just, you know, she's a good singer and she just put her vocals in, but to actually have, give it a bit more thought into, okay, how am I going to approach these backing vocals? How am I going to approach, you know, each of the songs is, uh, it's quite interesting. I, I didn't realize kind of singers do that. 
I'm probably sometimes. Very... I mean, that can be a yeah. job of a of producer sometimes too. You know, um, mm-hmm. is to kind of get other things out of a vocal. Especially, she's just really fantastic. She does a lot of voiceover work too, so she's okay. Kind of, a, you know, she's acted in the past, so she's more involved. And some some people just do show up and sing, and that's yeah. cool yeah. because that's the that's job one. But we yes. want um, she's so great and such a good friend of mine. We've known each other since we were kids. So it, it was, it's really fun to interact and be able to get into something. And then there's shorthand too. It's not like I sat out here for an hour pouring over the issues. Sure. Like this is kind of the thing. And she's like, Oh, I get it because she's yeah. into comics too. She's like, Oh, that's really cool. Okay. I get it. I got, I've got, I've got a thing. And then boom, she'd nail it. Was there any one particular song out of the six that surprised you the way that she kind of approached it? Mm. Was it like uh, something that you, you, uh, she suggested that you thought, oh, that's pretty cool. Let's go for that. It, what, yeah. I mean, it wouldn't probably, I think it's Sleep. She does a, no, it's not. It's the uh, last track, Spectre. So you can mm. really hear a character in her voice. Um, nice. At the, there's kind of a, a, a sort of a bridge part in the middle that gets mm-hmm. sort of weird and sad. And um, toward the end of that, it sort of uh, crescendos and builds up to go to the last bit. And mm-hmm. the, the, yeah, that character she brought, I was like, oh, that's really cool. It sounds like a nice. messed up David Bowie or something. It was pretty neat. <laughs> nice. Well, I, I've got a couple of clips from Spectre as well. Um, I can't remember which ones. I've. Let's see if, if, she, if she features in that one. Um, okay. So we are going to go through uh, each of, oh, actually, sorry, again, one other thing, one final thing. <laughs> Oh, gosh. I really should put these questions in order, you know, on the sheet. <laughs> anarchy. Uh, yeah, anarchy, yeah. Uh, okay, so I think you touched upon it in the spotlight. Um, orders, the, the, the order of actually creating and putting down on tape each of the songs, how did they go? Like, obviously, it didn't go from Sniper to, to – um, oh, it didn't go from Slasher to Spectre, right? Or did it? It did it, it, with the basic tracking, it did. We didn't, we didn't write them in that order. But we did um, track them in that order, yeah. Okay. Also, because so right away, as soon as the band realized kind of what I had in mind, yeah, we knew we kind of had to do it the same the same way as the um, as the arc is. Okay. Oh, well, then, as in, say, r- writing them, then how did they go? What was the that, first one? That was sort of. I think the first one was. Um, I can't remember now. It was probably. Um, It was either Slasher or Scarlet. I can't remember. But we, okay. we wrote in different orders. Um, yep. In fact, I think there may have been one or two songs that we scrapped that just weren't feeling the... They didn't feel like the issue. Ooh. Hang so on. Put a pin in. Yeah, put a pin in that one. I'd like to to get into that. Like, we'll go through each. And if, if you have any of the ones that, you know, ended up on the cutting room floor, that would be interesting to hear about. Yeah. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Um. All right, so uh, so sorry. What was it? Scarlet. Scarlet was first. Did you, sleep was first? Did you say? It was either Slasher or Scarlet. They all Slasher. start with S. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, what was the last one? Uh, was the, the last one that was written? sleep? Sleep. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's yeah. Very nice. Very nice track. That one. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, well, anyway, yep. Let's. Uh, st- no more dilly dallying. Let's get into it, loonies. We're just going to dive right in. Uh, okay, so the I'm just going to read this out. Noel from your band camp as well. Delita, description skewed but catchy, straightforward yet obtuse, angry but thought with sleeker, simpler, meaner. And uh, and we have a roll call here. Uh, so Travis Collins on bass, guitar, and vocals. We've got Joshua McKay uh, on drums, percussion, and drum machine programming. Uh, Noel, Looney Tunes Tate on uh, vocals, guitar. It doesn't say that on the thing. (laughs) (laughs) It's a collage. Uh, Jordan uh, Morantes uh, on guitar and soundscapes. And Janie Winterbauer on vocals. So those were the players on this EP. Now, um, the first track off this EP is Slasher. And, uh, and I had a note here, Noel. I think it's very important because at the beginning of a, an album, you want to kind of capture the feel for it. Um, yeah, the mood. The mood. Uh, this has uh, got an advantage because it, it links to a 
particular arc, which is the um, Ellis Shelby run. So there's a preconception of the mood there already, but you want to do it right. And, uh, and so anyway, um, we get a very um, otherworldly, I guess, introduction to, uh, to the album through Slasher. Um, and uh, Noel, I, we were talking about earlier, I, I likened it to actually the beginning of uh, Beethoven's Ninth Symphony and Stravinsky's Rite of Spring, where there are, at the very beginning of the piece, there's like, a, um, like an ambience that begins, begins it. Um, so, so let's, uh, let's yeah, let almost like it. a, like a string section or the violin section warming up. What exactly? Right, warming pieces, up. Okay. Yeah. Before it comes well, crashing in. Exactly. Well, mm -hmm. for the right of spring as well, it's more kind of like the, um, the beginning of nature, you know, just mm -hmm. like natural sounds. Yeah, anyway, this is the beginning of a psycho killer. <laughs> that's right. This is a little different from nature anyway. So, um, so I'm just going to play the beginning of, uh, of slasher. For everyone to listen to it. We've got a slasher again. So very um you know, very um sparse. But, you know, what I noted first with the arrangement was the, the drum machine, right, Noel? Is, is that, I'm very not that well versed in, <laughs> in the technical side. Yeah, of, making what, that sound. We actually had asked them to come up. Uh, I think there's only one track on the EP without a drum machine. But at that point, mm -hmm. early on, there was he didn't have a drum machine for that part. And I was like, just come up with something. We need something to make sounds. And he had that cha-cha. And I was yeah. like, oh, that sounds like, was it Halloween? Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Uh, but, you know, it sounds like literally something from like a slasher film, like that sound. I think it's Halloween, a Michael Myers sound when he's coming to get oh. you. Or is yeah. it Friday the 13th? One of them, you know, the cha 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 cha. Ah, cha. Yeah. Like, whoa, it sounds like that. That's perfect. That's creepy as hell. And especially with that ominous, sort of delayed, reverbed guitar. And I was like, that sets the mood before even the first word or beat hits. Yeah. Oh. Exactly. I mean, that guitar as well, it's just that like um, re repeating that kind of note, sustaining that note. Um, yeah, I got the vibe of more of it because the um, the issue is kind of very noirish um, and it's a bit eerie. The guy's, you know, is de deformed and killing people to, to get body parts and stuff. So yeah, before um, you yeah, even right. know that, it's just uh, Flint talking to Mr. Knight and the whole thing. Yeah, yeah it's just very noir and creepy in that way. Yeah, Before, you so, know, and just like their little conversation is quiet and yeah, weird. <laughs> like no, I've just, seen this before. This is yeah, yeah. No, no. It's a very, very nice um, kind of slow, kind of building introduction, and and the whole this whole song arrangement wise, Noel, right? It, it really does build upon itself. Um, so uh, you've got then the bass and drums coming in with the vocals um, for for the verse. Uh, and then during the second verse, we've got um, an introduction. Is that correct? Of a, of a second guitar, like playing a, um, like a, a riff or a phrase through yeah, there? Yeah, Jordan does all kinds of like, cool stuff like that. Um, mm, just, just yeah, it's just a, 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 you know, an extra dynamic push-up, yeah. sort of, mm -hmm. and melodic push-up because little of what I do is melodic. So, And he's got melody coming out as wazoo, so <laughs> it's nice to have him come. But he, he holds back a lot. And then yeah. sort of unleashes. That's kind of been his his um, signature lately. Well, there, there's certainly an unleashing. The final chorus is for me. I, I had full instrumentation, like the all inclusive. Um, so uh, uh, structure wise, we get okay. So at the beginning, we get that short intro. Uh, we get the verse. We get the chorus. We get the second verse, and it, it starts to introduce extra guitars in there. I've noticed. Um, actually, uh, I, I did a re-listen, and the second verse. Uh, sorry, is it Jordan or, or how you mixed it? It comes in, um, the second guitar comes in earlier. So it just gives it, it's a little point of difference um, I found uh, with it. So in the first verse, say, there was a, a guitar that comes in after the, after the second line. And in the second verse, it comes in just before the end of the second line and starts to build up. 
Um, and then uh, we get the chorus again, a second chorus with the extra guitars. Um, and then there's like a bridge version uh, and the chor- verse. And then there's a chorus at the end with, with full on, it full on explodes, right? Yeah. Um, all pedals on. All distortion all pedals, pedals on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, no, no, but very, very cool indeed. Um, yeah. So, I mean, tell us a little bit about the, um, I guess, working at, on the, on the chorus. Like, and the yeah, verse. that was uh, the verse and the, it's sort of the way, um, you know, at that end of that issue, it's Mark talking to that doctor and the doctor saying, you know, you, you don't have DID, you've got a God in your head or whatever, and that's messing you up. And, and, you know, she explains to us the different aspects of Kanchu. And I thought that's a good way to, the chorus is you know, just like literally, I say the four aspects mm, and that's yeah. it. So it's a way of setting up the issue, but it's also a way of setting up kind of the idea of, um, you know, what Kanchu is and what Moon Knight is and sort of the feel of the character in general. So it kind of jumps back and forth. And the first mm. verse is literally just kind of like the, the um, what happens in the issue. And then the second and third verses kind of mix, mix in the two between Mark's origin and oops, uh, Mark's origin and um, the rest of the issue. So that's mm, what the chorus yeah. is, is literally just um, the four aspects. Of yeah. Which, yeah. I mean, and we, we discussed this before as well, just off air about it. Uh, Ellis used that in the story, um, but it is actually true to uh, Egyptian mythology. Yeah. Um, so, which is cool. Somebody yeah. looked up his wiki. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, exactly. So we have Pathfinder, Embracer, Defender, and Watcher of Travelers at Night, which is, yeah, as, as you say, Noel, basically um, sums up the whole course. Uh, were there any... Um, I think me, me, yeah. Doug Munch looked up or knew... I know he knew some about Egyptian mythology, but how much do you think he was thinking about when he kind of retold the origin of Moon Knight. It looked into that, those aspects uh, of Kanchu. Well, speaking with him, I'm, I can't remember if it actually made it onto the interview um, when I chatted with Doug Mensch as well, but he was is really into his Egyptian mythology. He actually cool. has um, statues and relics in his house as well. Oh, so, wow. uh, yeah. So he, I mean, if, really... could, if someone just said, oh, there's this Egyptian god, here's the four aspects, I would immediately go, oh, that's a superhero. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it's like what a perfect setup. Oh man, the, the Egyptians knew what they were doing. They love their comics, apparently, as well. With the hierarchy, <laughs> <laughs> way ahead of us. So uh, mm-hmm. yeah, um, actually, I've got another clip here. So uh, I mentioned before again, um, uh, what do we got? Uh, the chorus. So uh, so the the four aspects, as you mentioned, Noel, and the the outro. So this is the the massive kind of chorus at the end. I love the um, that sound <laughs> coming yeah, back. No, no, towards the end of it, towards the end of that chorus, I love the collapse. It's, it sounds almost as if the song's just collapsing in a heap yeah, at the end. That's Jordan's uh, the guitar player's genius. He's just yeah. He's he knows music really well. I mean, he he uh, he knows theory and all that stuff, but he just throws it out the window when he needs to. Yeah, it's it's very cool, very cool indeed. Um, with this song, uh, Slasher Noel. Were there any previous versions of it, or as we mentioned earlier, cutting room floor outtakes or um, uh, revisions of it that you weren't happy with that didn't really make it into the song? No, it was pretty fully yeah. formed. I mean, it's it's really a simple structure. It's just you know, mm-hmm. verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, verse, chorus. I guess so. Mm-hmm. It, it didn't really need a lot of 
messing no. around with. Well, I mean, that's fair enough. What I did find in my uh, travails going through this EP, Noel, is that the structure, actually, each of the songs are very distinct and different. Um, and I didn't know whether whether that was an intentional thing or that was just something that evolved when you when you made each of the songs. But as you mentioned, this is like verse, chorus, verse, chorus. We'll send the yeah. other one. They're slightly different. Um, so Yeah, that's, I mean, that's part of um, writing something inspired on someone else's work. And that's also, but that's the other half of that is we also want to mix it up as much as possible when we write new mm-hmm. songs. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, for sure. Um, just going into the final bits with lyrics, uh, I, you know, I've just noted for each of the songs some standouts for me. Um, maybe I can ask yourself as well, Noel, any any standout lyrics for yourself um, that you liked of um, of Slasher? But for me, I, I love the, um, the, the verse, uh, important machines, noise inside the bone, I've died before, so I stood up which is very Moon Knight. I've uh, got that in bold. Never met anyone like me. So, um, again, if you know the issue as well, you, you can relate to what all this means as well with the uh, antagonist. Yeah. Um, but that, that kind of stood out for me, those lyrics there. And anyone's uh, uh, from this song, Slasher, that kind of, that you were happy with, that you, th- you thought, hmm, this is good. I'm, I'm happy that this came out this way. Um well, Yeah, I do like that verse. I mean, that's just taking snippets of sort of the conversation that he's having. Mm-hmm. Uh, that Moon Knight is, Mr. Knight is having with that um, antagonist. It's per, the, there's that moment where, you know, I think he even says something like, oh, these machines look really important. Or that looks, you know, some device that's been, he's grafted onto himself, look important. Yes. And then the guy looks down and he's, <laughs> he's got a shirk in it. And he's like, damn it. Yes. <laughs> it's, just, it's, a, it's such a great scene. That is very cool. It shows Mr. Knight's like, you know, two steps ahead. And and he even mm-hmm. says something, didn't he say something as well? Like, oh, you're already dead or something like that. He's, he's quite content with himself. He said, I've already dispatched. Yeah. With- well, that's like the guy's, you know, I'm going to kill you. He's like, I've died before that, you know, yeah. that's his line about dying before. He always says, it was boring. Uh, I can do this over and over again. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. great. That's really good. Well, um, so as I mentioned, that was a verse. Look, I'm, I'll play this now for you, for you loonies to listen to it. Um, and, yeah, here are the, the lyrics that I mentioned. So that was uh, that was Slasher uh, and Noel as well. Lyrics wise, uh, we'll get to it. It's um, I haven't got all the lyrics here in front of me for Slasher, but there are some recurring lyrics. I think that happened in Not Good Enough. That those lyrics they they yeah. return in Spectre. Yeah, and as they do in um, the comic too. Mm. From the okay. first the first issue to the last, I mean, it's Warren Ellis's brilliance. I mean. I think we've mm. talked before about how he said in interviews that he likes to write as if he's writing lyrics or writing an album, yeah. which is another perfect reason that is why it's so inspirational of a uh, of a comic in that way. It, you know, there's themes and the callback and like the sort of the hero's journey thing about uh, you know things rhyming or whatever, and it's kind of the same thing. Like um, Moon Knight says that to this guy, he's like, "Not good enough, soldier." And yeah. I think the line is well, not good enough is Inspector as well. He's, you know, when um, uh, the uh, former officer is training and lifting, he keeps saying to himself, not good enough, not good enough. I was like, yeah, yeah that's pretty good. And that's also a, a good look into how a, a lot of us feel about our own insecurities and all that stuff. Um, that's what people say to each other or say to themselves to try to uh, push themselves forward. Yeah, no, true. Which is funny because uh, what is good enough? I mean, that's not even oh, it, it exactly doesn't mean anything. No, true, true. Um, it can also be taken very much so. People can kind of relate to that statement. But also, if you look at Mr. Knight, um, 
it kind of also represents how um, how high standards he kind of sets himself and uh, how on top of, I guess for me, it's like how on top of the game he is. Mm-hmm. And like if the lieutenant or, as you say, military backgrounds, um, not up to scratch, then, you know, calls it out. So, yeah, very, very cool. Um, yeah, I didn't realise that it returned in the comics as well. So. Yeah. Uh, next track we have is Sniper. Now, this one, uh, Noel, is a shorter, sharper, well, it's a shorter song. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, it doesn't, um, uh, there's a quicker, at the beginning, there's a quicker uh, tempo with the bass line, which you can really hear. Uh, and let's let's have a listen to just the intro. So it kind of starts off rawer than, say, the first track, which employed already a drum machine and, and to create that kind of atmosphere. What we get is basically just bass and the first guitar just um, coming in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we get the drums. And is it um, – I'll put down here a whomping, like a whomping sound. Is that <laughs> – what's that from, Noel? There's, a, the there's an effect. Oh, well, there's the harmonics on my guitar, that do 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 um, and then, the, yeah, there's a, actually an effect on the snare drum. It's like a gated reverb. And okay, whatever that's... whatever frequency that the snare drum is coming across, wherever the uh, threshold clips off the reverb, it kind of gave it a vroom sound. And I was like, oh, that's, that's cool. I'm not touching that. Just let that one be. So that came across <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the mixing. We hadn't, we hadn't pre-planned that. And there's actually no right. drum machine in this one. Okay. So I wanted to at least kind of have it a little bit of a mechanical feel for -hmm. the percussion a little bit and that was the perfect thing to do nothing sounds more 80s and mechanical than a gated reverb on a snare drum (laughs) (laughs) like phil collins or something and and what was the intent then of of, um intending that sort of sound for for this song sniper just to have that kind of whomping sound and and yeah yeah, just another element because there was no drum machine to kind of fill out the rest of that Mm -hmm. kind of that palette Um, yeah and so it wasn't totally an intent other than i was like i wanted to make the drum sound a little bit more machiney but as soon as like by accident that whoop sound i like i said i just left it be and i was like that's great and then when uh, josh our drummer heard that mix he was like that is cool whatever that is (laughs) it's like that was you buddy (laughs) <laughs> that's good now it fills in it fills in um it fills in the sound uh and then from the drums and um and the uh this thing there there's the vocals come in but then there are additional guitars that really fill fill this out um it's a shorter song structure wise i put down issue. like oh it's a shorter issue as well yeah, i mean it's, it's feel- probably still 22 pages but it doesn't it feel, feel like it's like you can nice. read it in two minutes and that's yeah. kind of why the song is two minutes Right. It's just all action. Of, all action, yeah. A lot of silent panels and, and just, yeah, just very very uh, cinematic, I think we, we call it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it just, I think your eye does most of the work in it, if that yeah. makes any sense. I mean, yep. I know we all read the comics, but yeah, mm-hmm. um, a lot of moving. So structure-wise, so this is a little quicker, quicker pace, Sniper. Um, so different from what we mentioned before, verse, chorus, verse, chorus. What I've got here is uh, you have a verse A, and then there's an extended instrumental, I think, with um, which kind of goes into a verse B. It's not exactly a chorus, but at the end, no. which is there's the a chair. key change, it it shifts down. I think a whole step. Okay, for right. that for that B verse. So we're playing the same thing. Like the bass line is the exact same thing the entire song. Well, that's what he, I. Okay, he transposes it down that whole step for that second okay. verse, but it's still the same bass line, just now down a step. Oh, wow. And okay. then back up a step for the end. Yeah, okay. Because I was, yeah, I was convinced that uh, it was it was the same with a few changes here. Because it did it did sound different. I didn't pick it as a tone down. Or so, but um, yeah, great. It's also got at the end of, um, it's not a chorus, but it's kind of like a, an anthem, an anthemic kind of chant of the bank always wins, which upon mm-hmm. first hearing for me, I thought that was like the chorus. But then obviously going through the song again, it's not your conventional chorus. And then it returns to verse A kind of format. 
with obviously mm-hmm. different lyrics. Um, yeah, very quick, very cool song. As you say, uh, reflects the the issue itself and how quickly that goes by. Um, cutting room floor, Noel. Any any um anything here to pick up? Any any massive changes uh, that didn't make it to the final cut, or um, and any ideas that didn't make it to the final cut for this one? I don't think it was another one where it was just done. I mean, it's such a simple song. It was probably the second to last one that we had written when when we were rehearsing. Um, the, I think the only thing that, I think the very last verse, because, you know, it kind of decrescendos at the end in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, the the main guitar part just starts playing that kind of like almost U2 type melody, the delay, like dun, 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 yes. or whatever he does. Um, I think he had revised that one time but it was pretty much just that and i was like that's a cool way to end it because the issue kind of comes down i mean most of the lyrics um are just kind of taken from uh that sniper's former boss the you know the last one to yes the the, the man at the end of the issue who's basically describing to moon knight like oh this guy was our hired assassin or whatever and now he's yeah. useless to us yeah and yeah. so that's a, it's a good way. To, so we've talked about that before, but about how every issue in this run ends so weirdly and so abruptly and how cool that is. Yeah, that's true. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. And you can argue the fact that this kind of really ends up, this ends quite abrupt as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've got one clip here to play. Again, this is lyrics and standouts for me. Uh, I'll, I'll ask you first, Noel, I guess then. Um, don't want to steal any thunder. Uh, any uh, lyrics that really kind of... Uh, you, you you go ahead because I don't remember yeah. them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I picked, uh, I picked the whole uh, verse again and no guesses, well, as to why. There's another kind of classic Moon Knight quote. Um, All nine shots before the bullet hits the bone. One last job for free. They took my life, so I take theirs. I'm not real, nor are we. So, yeah, uh, yeah that last line, um, the classic Moon Knight again. So let me play. Let me play this one um, for the Looney listeners. <laughs> That little punch of Janie's vocal right there, I'm not real, is really yeah. cool. It's so poppy. It sounds like the Pixies or something. It's pretty cool. Oh, is that the Pixies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kim Deal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, her and I talked about that a couple times, on, especially actually on Slasher, that um, the delivery of the, uh, you know, I say, you know, uh, Pathfinder, and then they, they say Pathfinder, and she goes, mm-hmm. does it really deadpan? And the first time she did, I was like, whoa, that sounds like Kim Deal. That's cool. Do that. So, yeah, she just like yeah. straight face delivered path on, but you know she <laughs> sings like an angel so it's <laughs> but effortless effortless yeah and that was her i think that was her idea um yep. to do it because travis is actually saying every single line with me on that song mm-hmm. so that's not me doubled up that's okay. my voice and his voice and he's just uh syncopated with my yeah right vocal which is cool yeah, and uh, and by Janie coming in there as well, I guess uh, again that um, quite. I mean, for Looney fans, that quite popular or famous phrase of "I'm not real, nor are we." Again, it can be seen as almost a chant. So, um, you know, why not have um, other vocals in there as well? Yeah. Well, I thought that was cool too. The, the fact the line right before that is, um, wait, what is it again? <laughs> uh, they, they took my life. Oh, they so took I... my life, so I take theirs. That that. Mm that's something that uh that the antagonist in this issue is that's yeah. his, that's his point but the, in a way that's also that's also moon knight's point so it's a good parallel for those two characters yeah. and then the quick antagonist you know he mark dies he comes back and then he takes vengeance on the people who killed him so yeah yeah that's cool that's cool that's good um great and so now we come up to the third track no which is uh the released single uh, from this EP box, which um, which we've played previously as well. Uh, 
this is a call, um, and I'll I'll play this entirety uh, after we discuss it um, for the listeners. Uh, I've got here now. Look, I had a bit of a dabble <laughs> trying a to dabble. find the key, uh, trying to find the key for this. Um, so it goes in chromatics at the beginning, right? I mean, I don't know power chords or whatever for for guitars, but was it was it F sharp, F E? Did it go step down to get that right? No. <laughs> Music. <laughs> it's in it uh it's in, it's in i think it's in b it's in b oh maybe no it's not it, you're right i think it actually is in. i can't i play a, a weird chord really up high there's like the, the root the root and the fifth uh and then the second chord it's still the uh the root drops but the fifth stays so that's why it gives oh, it that okay. kind of dissonance and i have a weird effect on it there's a um, there's an old um, quite kind of sounds sort of wobbly of my guitar, mm-hmm. which is the intro guitar with the drum machine doing that kind of hip hop beat thing. Mm-hmm. Um, there there's an old back in the '50s '60s when they were trying to create um, reverb and echo effects. There's all kinds of different ways they do it. The most one of the more famous ones, obviously, is the uh, tape echo, mm-hmm. where the second head, the second playback head or record head is. Um, off and that's where you get the da, 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 but another kind of technology they used was um uh, a similar thing with a, a, a recording playhead but inside of an oil can oh cool and the oil can would spin around and then they would uh send the audio through it with like a, 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 a like an electromagnetic pulse or something like that anyway it get it got because there was uh the can the, me- the mechanics of the device um was it's literally like a can you know that you would have like oil in and there's oil in it um so the audio travels through this kind of weird wobbly sound and it would just like yeah. whoa, 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 kind of do that and you can actually get I, and they've made pedals lately to kind of try to recreate that sound because it's been so out of fashion and it can be so disturbing and most people what? don't want something like that, but of course, I'm drawn to things like that sound <laughs> disturbing and, and wrong. Yeah. And uh, when I saw um, a couple of different companies and started to make this effect, I was like, "Oh, that's cool!" Because you can't find the, those original devices anymore that work. Yeah, I mean, every once in a while, someone will have one, but they, I guess they break down all the time. <laughs> mm, <yeah. laughs> Someone's making something that even comes close to replicating that. I gotta have it, and I use it a lot on this. That's the main thing cool no that's uh yeah that's nice i mean i do love the the soundscapes that you guys create in it uh, it goes beyond the um what did they someone uh there was someone on facebook they likened your band to it was another band i can't remember it for the life of me um but they they're oh, kind of kind of well known um oh, block party was that it no no that's I, a band that's a band. <laughs> yeah, like that from somewhere. Um, mm-hmm. Anyway, you know the effects are really, really cool. So uh, no, interesting stuff. Um, I used to listen to They Might Be Giants. Noel, I don't know. If you, you, I you saw know. them many times when I was yeah. young. Yeah, me too as well. They actually <laughs> they're one of the few bands that didn't mind coming to Australia. So um, yeah, they didn't mind coming to Minnesota either. They seem to be <laughs> here all the time. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, but they loved experimenting with sounds and um and, and trying different things. I remember they recorded one of their songs purely from the the wax cylinder from the Edison. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the actual real way of well, not the real way, the the yeah. old fashioned way of recording, mm-hmm. uh, and it sounds really good. It's very soft, but you can still hear it. It's it's pretty mm-hmm. cool. Um, so anyway, so box. Uh, so as you mentioned, um, uh, you come in with the guitars. Uh, there's a second guitar that comes in uh, with the um, the structure, which again. I guess is more again of the the traditional sense of verse chorus verse chorus. There's an instrumental break. Um, and there's a verse, uh, and then it winds down. I said almost like a musical box towards the end there. Um, in any any ways of, of approaching this song, Noel, with the the content in mind of of that uh, you know that issue with the the music box because it is tied in with music a little and punks. Yeah, I mean that was the thing. <laughs> it was like, oh, there's punks, there's punks <laughs> yeah. in this comic, um, and. Declan Shelby is 
maybe famously or not so famously, a big fan of punk and alternative and weird music. Like there's a Easter egg right on the cover for um, yes, Sonic Youth, which mm-hmm. I think is his, he said, he's said before is his favorite band and mm-hmm. Fugazi and Sex Pistols yeah. Yeah. and what else? I even found some other ones when I zoomed in uh, a few weeks ago i can't even remember what else it is but yeah so i wanted it to be it's not the most punk rock song on the record but i wanted it to be the most sort of experimental yeah so like you public image he has right on that cover sun O. he does a little easter egg too it's like you don't see that often. the only other person who's that end up punk who does comics is probably matthew rosenberg because he used to run a punk rock record label so it's oh he did funny. okay yeah. Oh, yeah, right. I was talking to him on Twitter once and I was like, oh, I used to be in a band that was in your scene. And he was like, oh, crap, I loved that record. And I was like, cool, oh, write it into a comic. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. He, <laughs> um, he kind of, yeah, he kind of has that look, doesn't he? Of the, uh, I could imagine him running a, a record label. Um, yeah, well, that's why a lot of people have been pushing him to do Moon Knight. And he's uh, like, listen, they're not giving me Moon Knight. And <laughs> I was like, I, I'm not sure what other people's motivation, but, but mine was personal you know it was kind of selfish it was like <laughs> moon knight to me is like the most punk rock character you should be writing you're the most punk rock writer at marvel you should probably be writing this guy yeah well he certainly just tried to i mean in the punisher comic he's, he's introduced moon knight there so um he's very yeah, I know, yeah, in the, it's just a little incidentally yeah. Uh, yeah, token yeah. gesture but still yeah <laughs> um, anyway uh Lyrics wise, no, I've got here. So for me, when I was looking at the lyrics for this for box, um, much of it obviously is quite descriptive of, of the issue and the story. Um, but what I wanted to, to shout out was um, this, uh, the chorus, basically. Uh, so a world beyond, they map the afterlife, they shroud the dead, touch or punch the untouchable. So I think the lyrics here are a lot more abstract than the more descriptive ones that were a bit more um, obvious for, for the story. Uh, was that, was that an intent? Um, um, the, there's just that, the, the break in the middle of the um, issue where, um, where Spectre goes back to the, to the mansion and Kanchi was talking to him. And you know how it, it, it does become, I mean, it's simple. He just says, you've got things, to uh that you can use to fight ghosts and when he goes and he opens the line he's like i don't remember purchasing any of this uh, yeah, but that there's there's some there's some kind of references in Kanju's speech about um what you know like what this stuff can do and how it's sort of otherworldly and so the chorus is kind of describing like um the you know sort of the egyptian um I don't know, they're not, I don't know, just kind of like the, the, the mythology behind, or not even the mythology, I mean the real life, like the way they mummify um, kings yeah. and stuff to be able to to live on in the afterlife. You know well, what I mean? Yeah, no, actually that makes a lot more, lot more sense now. And I didn't pick that that was related to that conversation with Conchu and the, the basement mm-hmm. with the relics and stuff. I, I had it here as I thought it was the... Um, yeah, it probably sounds silly now for you because that's it's not what you've written for. But I was I was thought it was actually about those punk rock ghosts. Uh, a bit more of a I thought it was more of an abstract description of them kind of drifting drifting in and out. You know, um, um, you know, touch the untouchable or punch the untouchable because you know in the yeah. issue. I mean, that's like Moon Knight's part of the story in the song right yeah. there. You know, yeah, because um, yeah. that's like Kanchu saying to him like, "Hey, if you go put on this old Egyptian shit." Mm you can become sort of magic or whatever. And then you, you know, or you'll be in sort of the, the plane that they're in. Yeah. Um, yes. you know, or sort of the dimension they're in. And then you can punch them because which, I mean, obviously he couldn't punch him before. Yes. And now he can punch them when he has the bird suit on. Yeah. So, yeah. Really cool, um, uh, you know, thing that Warren Ellis came up with um, about having him fight, fight the ghosts. And it's it so kind cool. of one of those... Yeah, one of those examples where I want to see Murnot fight more supernatural kind of beings in because of, because of that particular instance. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So let's. Uh, but let's... that was like the first time, other than sort of Fist of Kanchu, mm-hmm. which you know they started bringing the relics, and he had the weapons that they retconned that Hawkeye made or whatever. Um, but that that was the first time that they really brought it back to some heavy Egyptian mythology stuff that Atlas brought back, and I was like, that's really cool. And it's in the middle of this crazy. Um, this crazy issue right. <laughs> he's fighting punk rock ghosts but there's that little break when he goes back home where it just yeah. gets really deep it's like and, and just in like what two three pages mm. it just sinks moon knight right back into that that's what the genius of this run is he was able oh, to yeah. to remind you of all why moon knight's so cool yeah and that yeah. there's so much uh ideas that you can bring through with that character yeah he does it with an, an economy of of like of pages and, and storytelling he does it um but i think it's really cool that he does it throughout the the whole six issues uh ellis you know he's got he's got the fans respect because he actually he makes nods and references to older runs like you're talking about the vista conchu um the ones of uh, peter alron and and um and morpheus uh you know there are little nods to the old mensch run and any yeah, minute there's a little easter egg in almost every issue if not yeah issue. But it actually shows that he's and incorporating it into his story. It actually shows he's given it thought. So mm-hmm. um, it just adds a, a nice layer to it. Um, and yeah, so I mean, it is a, a genius, a genius run. I, originally, I liked it. I didn't like 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 it. But every time I come back to it, I, I tend to like it more. Um, I guess yeah. because it's so easy to read, you kind of it's almost disposable. You kind of yeah, like okay, first time I first time I read that run, I had minutes. Yeah, and then I went back to kind of just look at the art because the art is so fantastic. And then yeah. you know, obviously, you start reading it again. I'm like, oh, I didn't catch that. Oh man, that's cool. Yeah, every. Mm. I mean, it's one of it's just one of my favorite. Yeah, I'd say comic that. runs of all time because yeah. of that. I'd say definitely. I mean, coming up as well, issue five is one of my all time favorite issues. Um, we'll get to that, Scarlet. But uh, why don't we just take a little quick break, Noel? Um, mm-hmm. I'll play out box. So, loony listeners, this is. Uh, box the the release single from Delita from their EP The Other Void, and uh, have a good listen to that. And uh, and we'll be right back after after that and a couple of messages. All right, Noel, I'll just uh, <laughs> the magic of podcasting. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna going. quick run run to the loo. Yeah, of course, of course. In the back, and I'm, I yep. may want to grab my phone charger. Those things getting loud too. So I'll just Don't be worry. a second. The magic of podcasting. <laughs> I'll have to see how well this phone charger thing works. Excellent. With my contraption that I've got set up here. I've got my phone on a mic stand. <clears throat> Sounds pretty kind of clear and crisp. It's good. Yeah, I finally got decent internet after screaming at my internet company forever. So I'm going <laughs> to put it sideways. Cool. Cool. Uh, ready to come back? Three, two, yeah. Yes, welcome back, Looney listeners. You are listening to Into the Night, a Moon Knight podcast. This is a special on Delita and their EP, The Other Void. 
and I am joined by Noel Looney Tunes Tate. I know you love that nickname, Noel, so I'm just going to keep on using it. <laughs> boy. <laughs> Wait, or is it? Wait, wait, oh uh, yeah, I think it's the other one. Yeah, that's it. The other way around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, you're, you're joining us, Loonies, again. We have we are reviewing the other void, as I mentioned. Uh, the first three tracks we've done: Slasher, Sniper, and Box. And now we turn to Noel. Um, the last three and track four is Sleep. Now this is. Uh, I put down a first distinct change of pace. Look, I mentioned tracks one and two. There is a change there. Um, track two being quite, mm-hmm. Sniper being quite um, quicker in pace. Uh, but Sleep is really uh, most distinct. Uh, everything's kind of slowed down a little. Um, I'm assuming to emulate the, the, the theme of Sleep and, uh, and it being kind of, uh, yeah, oh, not psychedelic, but you know the comic. It goes through mushrooms and and hallucin- hallucinations and stuff. Sort of psychedelic. Yeah, sort of yeah. psychedelic. Yeah, this was the actually the only song that we had um, written where I actually showed the issue to the band before we went and mm-hmm. wrote it. Yeah, like they showed up to rehearsal and I had uh, the comic out and I was like, I want to write a song that sounds like this. Yeah. And they were like, oh, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I made him look. I didn't make him read it, but I made him look through the art, especially the um, the trip into the the world where he goes. Uh, they were like, "That's really cool." Um, so that was how we kind of inspired it. So obviously, it was like they were like, "Oh, it needs to be a little bit more chill of a song, yeah, and more mellow." It, it certainly is. Um, let's let's give a a quick little listen to just the intro, so you'll see what we mean. Where um, you know, we take the foot off the pedal a bit. We start getting into the dreams. That was a, a bit of sleep. Uh, I just want to jump straight into Noel, into the lyrics. I love those lyrics. That's why I um, thought I'd open with that. Uh, the first the first verse. So Morpheus, formless, more becomes corrupt, lucid dreams, guiding things, chemical messaging. I love the, um, uh, how do you call it, the inflection or, or just the uh, the cadence of each of these um, each of these lines and how they kind of, like the rhyming couplet, yeah, whatever. the rhyming couplet. It's really, really cool. But not only that. Uh, um, again, and again, I don't know. Stop me if I'm reading too too far into this, Noel. But um, so obviously, Morpheus and Formless. I love those two words together as as almost. Yeah, does that rhyme? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's good. Almost. And then more becomes corrupt. So I don't know. So more again, Morpheus, Formless, more. Um, uh, it's a nice little little play on words there. And for me, um, I even checked the rhythm for this, the lucid dreams guiding things. Um, same rhythm and syllables as chemical messaging. Um, but I love there's just the two words at the end there. Chemical messaging seems to work. I like that. I really like the idea of chemical messaging. Yeah, right, too. right. I don't even know if there's a reference to that in the comic or not, or if that's just kind of how um, how I feel it, it was. But, the, you know, there's that... Um, idea of uh, uh, sort of like whatever it is, DNA messaging right. okay. or 
you know, it's, I mean, it's way beyond my pay grade of knowing what that is, but there's something in science about um, that they're discovering. I have a feeling maybe an issue. Yeah. How you can pass down trauma uh, through generations, right. through, through, our, through our biology, mm-hmm. you know, like I think they, they were studying um, survivors of the Holocaust okay. and how they um, were passing that trauma, not obviously down you know, through, through family and culture and and talking and things like that, but also like it it can be so damaging literally to the DNA Mm. of somebody that they can pass that down to the next generation and how kind of crazy and cool that is as as a theory just of how our bodies work, but um, also how kind of terrifying and sad that is that you could, it's not only can you pass down mental illness, but you could pass down, Mm just the trauma of something that you had no part mm, in. Yeah. It's really weird. So I think that's where kind of the chemical messaging and obviously like the, uh, there's like hints of sort of like some Marvel psychic kind of stuff in this comic, even though it doesn't go too deep into it, but uh, along with obviously with whatever the villain Morpheus is. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I'm not exactly uh, sure <laughs> what he is, which makes it so cool. Like, yeah, he, you know, it's like because he that non-mutant, super-powered weirdo experimental mm, Marvel stuff that's so yeah. cool. You know, I mean, he's not really like he's he's linked to dreams because of his link to his sleep and his ebon energy. Um, he he basically recharges, doesn't he? If he um, is that right? If he sleeps or if he doesn't sleep, he doesn't sleep. He recharges. I think it's the more he doesn't yeah. sleep. Yeah, yeah. The more the, the, all that yeah. like mm. negative ebon energy, whatever the fuck that is. Um, <laughs> oh, energy think, builds yeah. up into it. Yeah. Um, no, no, really, really cool stuff. It's very, uh, so, so this, so this song as well, Noel, um, it employs, uh, there's a, there's a, like a, a rumbling at the beginning. Um, where's that? Yeah, that's a that's a sample of um, a frog underwater. All oh, right, okay. And then uh, someone put a mic in an aquarium and recorded a frog just going nice. bubbling. Okay. You know? uh, and then I took it and I slowed it down to like half speed or even yeah. slower uh, with some like panning effects and some other water sort of effects and slowed that all down just to get sort of a soundscape of kind of what the bubbly weird mucusy stuff that um Declan Shelby and Jordy Belair bring out so well through that whole trip through the, the dreamscape. dreamscape yes yeah and not not the mm-hmm. fungus but the the actual the, the multicolored stuff right yeah yeah whatever all yeah. that weird stuff he's just kind of like going through layers yeah. of it and, that's actually cool that yeah, yeah. Very, that's very that sound really does kind of link to to that kind of imagery mm-hmm. as well um, it is goopy, gloppy yeah, stuff. Goopy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so we get um, the drum machine. Um, the guitar, is that you, your own guitar, the first guitar? It's almost a, like a chiming. Uh, it just... Yeah, it's it's the two of us together playing the exact same oh, thing. okay, okay. Um, yeah, I thought I kind of wanted it to sound like bells yes, or something, and that's kind of what they sound like because we're just re- really clean and very mm-hmm. bright sounding mm-hmm. guitars. Um, and your and your vocals here as well, Noel. The um, the solo vocals at the beginning, um, I had note here, um, very melodious, uh, like a lower register. Um, I thought you were going to say it, you're almost singing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it, it's it's really cool. It's it's very. Um, yeah, it's very very cool. And, and then the bass introduces, um, I got here just after the first line of the lyrics. So things slowly start coming in. Um, I had a note here. Um, so with the lyrics, infection, you've been dreaming, dreaming. Uh, sorry, you've been breathing in his dreams. Um, the guitar has almost like an oscillating effect. Um, was there any was there any particular imagery you're going for there for the um, that sound of the that's just when it starts to get a little yeah, bit do. more, because you notice where it's like these little half yeah. step drops. It's ding, yes. dun, yeah. ding, ding. It's like it's like that dissonant before it resolves the last note. That's a whole right. step down. Right, right, right. So that's when everything starts to get a little skewed mm-hmm. and weird. And then I think I added in a, a sort of a delayed vocal effect where it was like it's, I say infection, and then you can hear kind of like infection, yeah. infection, infection, like the weird yeah. stuff. Yeah. Really cool. 
So that's kind of like, here we go into the weird shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty simple. And I think you've been breathing in his dreams just a line. Yeah, that, that's very much a description. At yeah. the end, when he's like, discovers what's been oh, happening. Oh, yeah, literally. And why, why that guy was heavily messed up. Yeah, thoughts, literally so. the spores from the fungus, right? He was breathing in um, that yeah. kind of psychic. Spores. such a cool idea <laughs> it's it's very that is like i mean it's very moon Knight, but it's really worn out yeah. it's just, just like classic <laughs> um also just a question as well like no so you mentioned about this uh this effect of the the frog in the aquarium um and your vocals within section as well so how do you um live like when you perform live how, how are you set up how do you we just we just play it. We don't worry oh, about yeah, that okay, stuff. Okay. Josh has a Josh has a drum machine next mm-hmm. to him, like an actual machine that he has programmed yes. and you know messes with. Like during that, there's what you know the the drum machine sort of sounds come in mm-hmm. at the beginning, yes. um, the that mm-hmm. stuff, um, and that has the, there's like weird crackly sounds. That stuff he has in his machine and he manipulates okay. it live. To like, there's like uh, frequency sweeps and um, little bits of distortion that come in, and so there he's twisting his because he's not playing any drums up until the second verse. Yeah. So he's got he can goof around and be a little nerd on his little device that he bought. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. Oh yeah, that's not... but we don't do like the bubbles no, aren't know. there or like the the vocal effects. We just keep it a lot more simple. Oh, okay, I thought maybe you had I don't know like similar to pedals and stuff for vocals. You can manipulate it while you're on stage. People do that. Do that stuff. I don't. I don't even have them put reverb on my voice oh. live. I just keep it very dry, so it's very upfront yeah. and kind of disturbing how loud and dry it okay. is. And I don't want it to blend in. I want it to, because I, I do, sing very low or yell. Or like my my register mm-hmm. is lower in deleter than my talking mm-hmm. voice. You know, so um, it's let's keep it dry and really upfront and. Um, and then it's like people use pedals and stuff live for their, even for their vocals. But um, I've done plenty of live sound myself and I know how big of a pain in the ass that okay. is. And it never sounds right. It's like, don't even fucking try. <laughs> just, just say <sing>. yeah. <laughs> stuff. Yeah, yeah. Right. It should be live should be different. Recordings are uh, recordings. You can have fun and do different That's stuff true. and you don't have to, you don't have to pull it off yeah. every time. That, yeah, yeah, there is a like a fine balance. I kind of feel as well. I mean, because obviously you don't want to go to a live performance and just get exactly what you get on the CD. You, you know what I mean? Uh, you want no. something special, yeah. but at the same time, as well, CD. I mean, sorry, <laughs> whatever, whatever, <laughs> whatever these young shows our age. But but at the same token as well, you want to go to a band that you like listening on the album. Um, you like to go to to them live, and you you like for them to capture that essence of what made it so appealing. When you, yeah, I mean, you don't want them to suck. <laughs> they should play well. I mean, there are people yeah, who of course, you know really bad live. Who, yeah, yeah, they're really bad yeah. live, and they they hire people like me to make them sound Ooh, good on record. Yeah. But when they play, they very can't do it. And sometimes that's that's cool. Oh. You know? Like, there, do you remember there used to be a band? They've come back again now, but called Sleater Kenny. No, no. Yeah, there was a band here from the States called Sleater Kinney. Um, uh, one of them actually did that show called Portlandia with the okay. oh, think... um, guy from Saturday Night Live. It's, right. it's a whole thing. Anyway, um, back in the 90s, I mean, they were a big band. and They had a couple of records, and they were great, and they played great on it. And then I went and saw them live, and I was like, oh, this is much sloppier. It was still cool because they had a performance, and they knew that they okay. weren't a tight great live band but they had a presence and performance it's like oh it's a different thing it's fine and then there's other bands you can show up and see and they sound just like the record that's cool too it's a little boring i can go home and listen to the record but unless they have something exciting um there's a fantastic band who's a big influence on me um called clinic and they're from liverpool england and they they're really weird it's kind of a mash of kind of um 60s psychedelia kind Mm -hmm. of weird music um and then more kind of like modern min- minimalist sort of punk yeah. stuff they're kind of a weird mix and they've got little, a lot of elements of like little bits of like dub reggae and all kinds of weird shit mixed in but they're really cool it's very strange man yeah. but they all wear um or 
like scrubs and, and masks when they play. You know? Okay. Right. Uh, like yeah. they've got those weird face masks and like the little the little hat thing goes. And sometimes they wear different clothing on the rest of their body or sometimes they just wear the OR scrubs. And the reason they do that is they're like, we just stand here and play. Yeah. So we want to give you something extra to look at. <laughs> You know, <laughs> like we're not going to dress up like Guar or Kiss or something, but like we just stand here. So we should thought we should at least look weird. So I look like a clinic. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's really cool. Anyway, I digress. Uh, no, no, not at all. Um, yeah. So that was uh, that was sleep, a very um, kind of a slower, um, slower song out of the EP. Then it kind of uh, picks up again. And this is my favorite issue of the whole Warren Ellis thing, issue five, Scarlet, it's everyone, you know, people who know of Moon Knight know of this issue. It's him going up the, the tenement, um, just bashing his way through um, to save Scarlet, uh, a young girl named Scarlet, you know, obvious nod to Scarlet Fascinera. Um, and it's just so, um, I think it's just so in your face. And, and Jekyll and Shelby art is really good as well. Um, the layouts. I always talk about um, strip panel naked. They, yeah, I was just going to mention yeah. that. This is like, and he's not the only one who's no. done like mm. a dissection of how great this mm. issue is for the art. So well, uh, so well thought out. Um, it's it's almost like a um, like a like a Will Eisner doing like a ec crime comic or something you know because <laughs> it's mostly a wordless comic yeah. um eisner was really into you know mime comics yeah. like you should be able to um i think wally wood all those guys kind of were like you should be able to tell a story without any of the word bubbles mm-hmm. um and this totally exactly. does but yeah at the couple word bubbles that are in there are so it's good really good <laughs> as well yeah oh, look, let's just go straight uh into it as well the, well the lyrics if we're talking about the lyrics here the, the way that you use them, Noel, I thought it was really cool. Um, and please let me know if, if the comic does this as well. I don't think it does. Uh, you've used the kind of the phrase, you know, you see me coming um, two different ways in, in the song. So the first one. That could be dirty. Sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, it could be dirty. Um, so the first one is uh, in the chorus. Hello, Scarlet. I must look pretty weird. Awesome, awesome part of the comic. Uh, what seems to save your life, the one you see coming. Um, so in this instance, the one you see coming is quite affirmative. He, he's a guy that's come to rescue her. Uh, and then towards, I think it's the outro, uh, splintered mind, warn the dead, when you see me coming, run, which is more synonymous with, with Moon Knight. You know, um, he likes to see, you know, he dresses in white because he wants criminals mm-hmm. to see him. And he, oh yeah, and he's telling telling that to Scarlet yeah. too, which is you know just like you know, um, who's I guess that's really a simple li- lyric of like who who is here to save your life? Oh, the guy dressed in white. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that last that last verse is close to verbatim of what he tells that guy that he hit with the glider, who's probably yes, dead. That's right. It is. It's um yeah yeah, yeah that's right. That, so that was back. He was just like, hey, wherever that, you know, wherever you're going, you know, yeah. tell the rest of you that when you see me coming, you better run. Yeah, exactly. That's pretty cool. It is. It's really weird. Another weird abrupt ending. To it's the very issue. Yeah. You just, it's almost like a PS. Yeah. There's a certain, a few of these issues, you kind of, you read it and then there's a couple of times you do a double take. You go, hang on, is that, is that the end? <laughs> you yeah. look, oh, that's a front cover to the next issue. How come? Um but anyway, here's a, here's a clip from the chorus uh, for Scarlet, what we're talking about with these lyrics. Hello, Scarlet. I must look I just noticed, noticed I added a syllable into that chorus, what seems to save your life. And that actually makes it feel differently for me now. Oh. It's like, you know, what maybe saves your life. <laughs> <laughs> 
or maybe are you not alive already? And this is, you know, what seems to do it may not actually do it. Oh, yeah. Good. Yeah, this one was the hardest one to write. It was the last one I wrote lyrically because the issue is so... Yeah, did, where can you draw from, really? Like, Yeah, what what I just like, you know, yeah. floor one. Yeah. yeah. Moon Knight kicks somebody's ass. Floor two, he kicks a couple more people's yeah. asses. They wouldn't make very interesting lyrics yeah. for a song. Hard moments, <laughs> you know, some of them. Yeah. I love that's one of my favorite Moon Knight panels ever. Yeah. <laughs> Kicks a guy in the stomach and makes him fall. <laughs> I wonder if that was in the script. Yeah, um, and so yeah, this I mean, structure wise, though, as I was saying, lyric wise, it was hard to kind of latch onto, but um, the structure again, we're looking at a, a verse, a chorus, uh, the second verse, um, there were added guitar, like riffs and stuff happening. Uh, then it goes back to the chorus, and then there's a uh, there's a, a chord progression. I think a key change or, or something. Not a key change. Um, bridge. There's a bridge. Yeah, the, yeah, and it's quite distinct. It goes it goes into something else, uh, which is also the instrumental. Uh, so let me just uh, let me just play that little little clip. It's the part where Jordan gets to just do cool it shit. It is really cool. Yeah, it's called the Jordan does cool shit part. <laughs> And it, and then it kind of pairs back down to um, the verse. Yeah, it gets quiet like the, yep. like the issue does before the postscript when he's talking to Scarlet. Ooh. That part is so cute and weird. Yeah, that is. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. It's so odd. It's kind of that thing. Like, is she, yeah. it, it, she almost looks like she's blind or something. Mm. It's hard to tell, you know, the way she's, like, touching his face. Yeah. It's a thing. If, um, that in- I just did a Kirby hand. <laughs> It's the thing of Sorry. the innocence, right? After all this, like this massacre, and all the violence mm-hmm. that happened before, just contrasted with this like schoolgirl, and and uh, his his demeanor as well just changes. Um, it's mm-hmm. funny, uh, like you can almost see a smile through the mm, mask. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Yeah. It's it's really cool. I love I love um, how Shelby does that as well. He actually shows the face behind the mask, not only in this issue, but you see it in in the other issues as well. It's, mm-hmm. I mean. It, it, uh, Sinkevich did that too. Yeah. I was just reading issue like 20 or something yesterday. Yeah. I think because you were talking on the last uh, episode about issue, what was it, eight? Eight, yep. And you jumped ahead in like the epic to like 20 and you're like, see, now this looks like Sinkevich. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, does it? And I grabbed it and I was like, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? Because you, you, you read Sinkevich all the way through and you, you kind of, you, you kind of develop, develop your eye with it. Only mm-hmm. until you kind of contrast them, you know, at the extremes to get you see the difference that he's kind of, you know, oh, yeah. yeah. But no, true yeah, as right. well. But um, just having said that though, the previous runs as well, you don't see much of that facial expression through through the hood. Uh, it's in Sinkevich, so mm-hmm. Shelby kind of brings it back if if that. Yeah. Um, he really does. It's really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, but there wasn't a lot to even. I think the first verse. Um, first verse is just inspired by the conversation that he has at sword point mm-hmm. with that thug and, um, and he's like i'm not interested in what your you know street thug politics are <laughs> and i just thought like i'm not interested in the politics is like a cool line because yeah. it could go beyond i mean it's oh, yeah, it, you know, it, a little thing about me is i'm very interested in the politics of everything yeah. but uh yeah. the fact that yeah. he isn't is cool yeah. And it can, yeah, it can go as you say. It can go beyond what what it just meant in the in the um in the actual story as well. Like, you, know, you can see mm-hmm. the song as an abstraction as well, and you enjoy it for for different bits. Um, yeah. Any uh any cutting room floor stuff? Any uh, because this was a hard one. So there must have been plenty of lyrics, right? That yeah, lyrics. Yeah. There, this is the one I had rewritten 
who knows a dozen times maybe mm-hmm. to get it down and and while even tracking to get this that's why i noticed that i added in that one syllable in the chorus obviously yeah. to to make that work rhythmically with what i was trying to say yeah but this was music it was it was pretty easy okay. this may have been like the second one we had written oh, or something oh, like that yeah. or somewhere in the middle but it's such it's such cool music and i was like all right we've got the music and we've got mm-hmm. it how i want it to feel the hell am i gonna write about for this sometimes the hardest thing isn't it though as well like you have this completion like to an extent and then it's kind of like how do i kind of finish it off Mm -hmm. um and finally we have spectre track six now noel i've pulled out a few what i think a few references or influences or what actually it sounds to me um so so a longer instrumental uh intro uh, there's more of a thumping kind of sinister vibe to it. Uh, we're back to, you know, uh, even compared to, say, Scarlet, I think there's more of an aggressive tone to it. Uh, it reminded me of um, some early Nick Cave Bad Seeds uh, mm. and actually a little bit of the day. He was just here two nights ago <laughs> and I didn't go. Oh, they've yeah. got a new album. I'm so out of the loop. Yeah, I, I knew there was a new album. I didn't even know he was playing until that day I looked at Twitter and someone was like, I'm so excited to see Nick Cave. And I was like, what? <laughs> How come I didn't know? Uh, yeah. And I was like, oh, those tickets are way too much money. I'm not going. Uh, but anyway, yeah, yeah. A, a big inf- at the time, this was definitely the first one we wrote the music mm-hmm. for. Because uh, the, there's, um, and kind of in the vein of early Bad Seeds, there's a group called the Pop Group. Okay. That were from England. Yeah. Um. And there are a lot more obscure sort of post-punk stuff, but a lot of their stuff was very, um, I suggest sometimes you listen to the song called We're All Prostitutes. Okay. And it's just really chaotic and there's like alto sax just making noise in it and everything is just kind of like noisy and weird. And the singer is just very like um, kind of over the top. He's, we are all prostitutes. Right. Everyone has their price. And it, like, it's, that sounds <laughs> like, uh, you heard of the birthday party? Like Nick Cave's before. Yeah, it's more it's more like the okay. birthday party than anything. And they have a little bit of um, have you ever heard of an uh, English group called the Gang of Four? Oh, heard of them, never heard of them though. But yeah. Yeah, their their stuff is very stringent. Dun, 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 dun. But um the pop group has some of that um, almost like a weird white boy funk element over this really crazy messed up stuff. And so that's kind of was the influence. It doesn't sound like pop group at the end of the day, but that was kind of the idea is just to have this kind of groovy rhythm, but with all this messed up guitar crap holding up and weird. Like I'm playing one note through that whole yeah. part, just one chord. Yeah. Um, and I guess it's like one and a half chords because I add like a diminished something or other in there. Um, but they have the two loud crazy and then it kind of breaks down to something that's almost kind of groovy mm. with the weird little guitar. And that's where they have the vocal over that part. Yeah, right. I don't know how I started there, but I ended up there. <laughs> oh, anyway, uh, here's, here's a snippet, I guess, of, of Spectre, the intro. So uh, the more I listen to that, Noel, as well, I'm not to say that obviously that was the intention or anything, but yeah, I, I do hear a, a lot of the birthday party, you know, just thumping, um, big kind of bass. Um, yeah, the bass, I just realized, is doing like all the heavy lifting there. Yeah. yeah. And, and this structure wise has got more of, I've got here, um, so there's verses, but there are more instrumental breaks and, uh, and, and um, there's a bridge in there as well. Uh, so doesn't have a distinct chorus i guess it just goes from a, an instrumental to verse instrumental break verse then there's a bridge kind of a verse two with an instrumental break and then it goes into an outro so uh so it's mm-hmm. kind of structure again um but yeah no really really um yeah really really good uh 
really good song here. Uh, any any cutting room floor? Any um, extra lyrics or approaches to this that you? This, as you said, this is one of the first ones that you you did. So, um, yeah, this one came really came easy really, too. I think he, yeah. it was, um, he just had that boom, boom, um, and I don't know if it, this may just be in my in my head. But I feel like we just jumped right into it, and it mm. just happened. You know, like uh, it happens a lot where we just kind of jam or whatever mm. on stuff, and then uh, that's it's just it. You know, and then we're probably like back and forth, back and forth between those two parts. And um, uh, we're like, well, we should probably add. I'm sure the bridge is the only thing we kind of worked on at all. Um, like put more than a second thought into it. Yeah. But when you, when you jam, uh, do you do you pick a key or how, how does that happen? No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how we do it. We've been playing together long enough yeah. now where it's just those guys are really good musicians. Mm-hmm. So some, maybe sometimes I'll go like, Arr, and then they go, Arr, and then they uh, okay. fill it all okay. in, you know? it's all. It's all very much yeah. by ear and stuff. So yeah, yeah. 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 And I think those toms are to a, they're tuned to a key, D or G, whatever the key the song is in. Mm-hmm. So we probably just like, we hear that doom go, okay. Arr, that's right. the key of the song. Now. Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, and lyrics wise, I've got um, some really cool, um, favorites here. Uh, the first two lines are really good. The Black Spectre, Freak Beat Lunatic. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's a line from that. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's cool. I love that part. He's like, we're dealing with all these freak. What was he? He just put on the freak beat. The freak beat. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, seems, that seems really, um, I won't mention the, the, it seems very like a sort of like a Gotham Police Department problem. <laughs> you know? It does, but like yeah. it's just like uh, like I don't know if that's ever been mentioned in one of those books or not. It just kind of seems like like oh great, I'm on the freak beat. I got to deal with all these clowns and just, uh, weirdos with bowler caps and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, I just like the phonetics of it. It just really yeah, it just yeah, it sounds cool. Um, but these other lyrics stand out, and I bolded some here. Um, I deserve to be loved. I never want, the, and this is very synonymous with the issue. Um, mm-hmm. I, I deserve to be loved. I never wanted to be loved. Um, this is going to be a fight. People who love me suffer and die. That is why I always win. I always win. Very kind of chilling ending to the um, to the to the issue, and uh, I'm glad that you've included it here in, into this. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a it's kind of a conversation back and forth between the two of them mm. at the end there, and then I kind of just did that in the lyric because yeah. you know, uh, so I I always wanted to be loved is what the black specter kind of says earlier in the issue or he, I mean, that is kind of his thing is like, why the hell is Moon Knight get all his attention? He's this loony and I'm a cop. I'm a hero. Yeah. You know, which is kind of a, I didn't even think about that in a way, but you don't see um, bad cops too often in Marvel comics, you know, but you do in the other, the other cities, the other, Right, you know, in the uh, the, the the Gotham, uh, mm. yeah, I guess. I mean, yes. yeah, there's the corrupt, but like they they don't often um, have like the New York police be like this corrupt yeah. thing. Well, Daredevil does Daredevil, sometimes, yeah, but, but um, doing it now, yeah. But usually they're kind of kind of heroes yeah. in the thing. So to have to have a a, a shithead cop who's you know super insecure and violent and stuff like that is. Mm. Um, that's a little, you know, it provokes some things. I think that you don't see in yeah. comics. Too. I mean, it kind of, sh- I think it shows off a little bit of Warren Ellis's kind of um, English, the, yeah, kind of anarchist, the, yeah, kind yeah, of exactly. Alan Morian vibe that he kind of has sometimes. A, a little discreet finger to authority. A little, yeah, exactly. A little anti-authoritarians that like a lot of English seem to have, yeah. you know, like, we're just like, no, we're fine and proper, but you know, yeah, but yeah. back off. We don't let our cops have guns. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, Warren Ellis is an interesting character. Um, you know, uh, beyond just being an Englishman, you know, just seems mm-hmm. as an individual. Um, he is. Yeah. So this is a yeah, very very cool. Again, I've just got uh, arrangements. Uh, Drum machine. That part, by the way, makes me sad every single time I hear it. The uh, just like I the the back and forth that bridge lyric about I 
I always want to be loved. I never want to be like the people who love me suffer and die. Yeah. I think he says that, and it's like, oh, I know. I know. what a bummer. It is, yeah, yeah. And it makes me think of uh, Max's run after that, and you know, part of the th- reason I really decided after rereading again lately, I really like the first half of Max's mm-hmm. run is because he, you know, it's it's kind of departure and it's a new thing, but it he's mirroring, echoing back things from. Re- Moon Knight's recent past, you know, it's like he's I'm a loner or whatever. All of a sudden, he's like, "Crap, I can't be a loner. I have a daughter." Yeah, kind of. You know, yeah, so he, he really touches upon it. Like he confronts, he confronts those um, very moonisms from Moon Knight. Mm. So, yeah. Um, having said that, Noel, I, I don't want to make you cry, but here's a clip from the <laughs> <laughs> on the bridge. It won't make me. <laughs> It's not really a, de- a defiant proclamation when you're seeing it there. It's all very like almost forlorn as well. And there is a little yeah. It's like uh, you know yeah. He's not the way it's. I feel like we kind of presented it is. It's like it's not a good thing to always win. No. Yeah. You know. That's it. It's just like because my life sucks and I don't have to care about anybody. Mm. There's no consequences yeah. for what I do except for just to myself. I don't have a responsibility to anybody else. Yeah. And therefore I can throw my body at you or, you know, come yeah. in, come into a walk through an explosion. It doesn't it doesn't matter. And that's, if I'm gone, yeah. you know, who's it gonna hurt? Yeah. And that's pretty Which sad. is like yeah. It's troubling. Yeah. You know, like that's that's probably the way a lot of people feel. Uh, when they're down on themselves, mm. you know, it's like, well, what is it, you know, what's going to even matter if I'm gone? Mm. Yeah. Like maybe the world would be a better place, but with Moon Knight it's kind of great. Cause he's like, yeah, I, I don't have a care in the world. I'm just going to kick your ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like there, there's no consequences mm. really, because I'll come back to life Yeah, and uh, whatever. Yeah. Which is kind of, it's just, yeah. And you, it's you, mentioned, thought, so. you mentioned Max Bemis. There's that one, if I can, pull out the correct issue number 196 i'm gonna say it's the one where moon knight's heads on the platter on the front cover and mm-hmm. it goes into the uh visits the so- a society of sadists it's that similar kind of attitude he's very like he's, i'm gonna kick your ass like i'm gonna eat my eat my chicken and then i'm gonna like kill every one of you or whatever or, you know yeah. every one of you look to your left look yeah. to your right you're all dead <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um as you mentioned there's a, a very empty kind of um an emptiness to to him just saying as well i always win because what what sort of consolation is that when you have this freedom but at the same time mm-hmm. you don't have you know the other qualities yeah yeah so um yeah so uh those um those were the the songs there noel uh thank you so much um for spending the time to to take us through it uh all, all six of the the songs of uh the other void ep thank you for having me <laughs> no worries and just a reminder loonies as well we mentioned at the top of the show october the 11th which is the friday um check out three 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 one club was a club three three one it's a three it is the 331 Club for some reason. Okay. The 331 Club at 9 p.m. Uh, no cover. Uh, Delete are playing. Uh, sorry, where, where is that again? The kind of address? Uh, M- Minneapolis? North? Yeah, 331 University Avenue Northeast or something. Uh, yeah. Minneapolis. People from here know where it is. Mm-hmm. So any local loonies there, um, definitely make your way down there. Uh, Delete are playing alongside buildings and arms aloft um so yeah once again a big thank you for for coming on noel uh where can people contact you if they if they want or if uh if you want them contacting you (laughs) uh well you can search all the social media we are deleter for twitter instagram facebook 
Um, yeah, we are Deleter. And then myself, uh, Twitter is Noel Tate, K-N-O-L-T-A-T-E. And uh, I have an Instagram page where I post a drawing a day that I do. That's awesome, yeah. Um, and that's Tate underscore drawings. Um, and I need to post something on that today, actually. Excellent. Uh, well, as always, Lenny, you can find all these um, links in the show notes. Uh, so just click on them and, uh, yeah, um, drop us a line. It's always good. Drop Noel a line. Uh, and more importantly, go check out their uh, their gig. And even more importantly, go check out their band camp. Uh, it's available now on, on all other platforms. But uh, if you can drop into their Deleters Bandcamp um, website, um, make a purchase there. Uh, it's a really a worthwhile uh, album, especially yeah. if you're a Moon Knight fan. You're going to love it. So. Um, so next phase, uh, it is, as mentioned uh, previously, uh, it's a waxing gibbet. And so we have a trade arc review. And uh, I pulled a bit bit obscure here. Uh, Noel, I'm not sure. I'm wondering if you have these issues. Uh, Marvel Comics presents numbers 152 to 154. Uh, so there's a backup story for you tonight. Yeah, it's in the late 80s, 90s. It's a Marvel Comics presents. Um, I stumbled across it. I don't know. I've ever yeah. seen those. Is that around the time of, um, uh, uh, you said late 90s or late 80s? Oh, late 80s. So it's around the time of, oh, okay. uh, Mark. Like, oh. I actually, okay. uh, actually, it could be early to mid 90s. Because so maybe between Fist of Kanshu and Mark Spector or something? No, no, it's definitely uh, Mark Spector. So a little tidbit for, for loonies. Uh, it's actually an addendum to an issue, I think it's 23 of Mark Spector Moon Knight, where he fights that guy with the chainsaw, looks like from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, mm -hmm. You actually see what happens to the criminals that he put away in that issue. Uh, and yeah, it's it's covered in three issues from Marvel Comics Presents. So we'll be we'll be covering that. Uh, easily available, Looney's. Uh, I bought mine off eBay only for a couple of bucks. So they're obviously not worth much. Nineties <laughs> um, comics. Nineties comics, <laughs> exactly. And uh, we'll have special guests. Hopefully, fingers crossed. The guys from Moon Knight Core, uh, the Facebook page. So Bobby and Dave will be making an appearance. It'll be really fun to chat with them. First time that they're going to be on the show. Um, we, we love their page. And, uh, yeah, it be, should be a fun a fun uh, chat. Uh, also, Loonies as well. Look, I'm not going to dwell too much on it. You can find us on email, Facebook, and Twitter. Again, look at the links in this podcast episode page. Just drop us a line. Uh, most importantly, check out us on facebook.com slash group slash ITK Moon Knight, uh, a really cool group. A uh, fun group of loonies there. Uh, you can see Noel banding around there as well as a few others. So uh, it's a very fun place to, to talk Moon Knight. Uh, finally, iTunes ratings, guys. Uh, any reviews or ratings would be much appreciated. Uh, it just helps us get more um, exposure to people doing searches on Moon Knight for podcasts. We are currently the only one out there. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Until I start my rival one. <laughs> <laughs> Until I'm sure others will pop up. Um, but, uh, yeah, any review or rating would help. Um, once again, Noel, a big thank you. My good sir, always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. And as always, loonies, may Conchu watch over the denizens of the night. Catch you later. Bye-bye. Oh, this is great. Cool. Let me go take you on a walk and shut down my Pro Tools.